This video is sponsored by CA3D Studios. Today, I'll be working on 2B from Nier Automata. Even though I never played the game before, I always found the design of 2B to be very interesting. She looks super cool and beautiful at the same time. The team behind 2B wanted to create her so that she'll be easy to cosplay, and I think they succeeded in that. So I knew I had to do a video of her when this model of 2B was released by CA3D, who is also today's sponsor. CA3D is a Patreon membership where monthly they release up to 9 models for 3D printing. I have been a long term fan of them. Not only do they offer super high quality designs, they are also one of the best bang for your buck. For $20 a month, you get the current 9 models and also the model released in the previous month. They are always looking to give us the best value and are actively listening to our feedbacks. Recently, they just hired a team specialized in pre-supports to make our printing lives easier. They also expanded their team and hired an additional 3D artist. One of my favorites from last month is this Misa from Death Note. They also have popular models like Vi from Arcane and even Karlak from Baldur's Gate 3. If you want to 3D print beautiful models created by a group of talented artists, make sure to go check out their Patreon. Thank you CA3D Studios for sponsoring this video. Now, let's continue prepping 2B. When I dry fitted this model, I noticed there was a decent sized gap between the torso and the legs. I tried sanding down the pegs, but that wasn't enough to close the gap. So I decided to try a new method with the fun crinkle UV putty and Vallejo's liquid mask. I first tried it off camera on the arm and that worked out decently. So the idea for this method is to fill the gap between the connections without having to glue it permanently together because I want to be able to paint the two parts separately. So first, I'm going to spread some liquid mask around the bottom part. This will prevent the UV putty to stick onto the bottom. Then, I'll use the putty and spread it all around, so when the parts connect together, the excess will be squished out to fill the gap. Finally, I just have to remove the excess and lightly cure the putty with a UV light. With the liquid mask, I can easily peel off the any residue of the UV putty and have a clean surface to work on. After I cured the putty some more, I can start sanding it down now. As you can see, the gap is much better, but still not perfect. I think I'll get better at this method with more practice. One thing that I love with the UV putty is filling drain holes. With methods involving epoxy putty, those work pretty well, but it just takes too long to cure. With the UV putty, I leave the part in my curing station for a minute or two, and the model will be ready to be sanded down. Now, let's start priming the model. With everything ready, now let's paint. I originally was going to paint this robot in a metallic scheme, but after looking at the source images, I noticed they had more of a stone feel to them. So that's how I'm going to paint it. With that base coated, I'm going to move on to the skin tones, and as always, I start off with this squid pink from Vallejo.
For her actual skin tone, I want her to have a really pale look and I've always struggled to achieve the image in my head. So this time, I'll do a slight variation to my usual method. I used to start with a mix of Athena skin and skin tone, but this time I'll be adding some pale flesh to the mix. Next, it'll be a thinned down red only on small areas to make the skin more fun to look at. And since I'm trying a new method today, and also because I mixed too much of the red, I decided to give her skin some speckling by turning the air pressure completely down. I honestly don't know why I tried it, but I just felt like it. Next, to achieve the very white skin, I mixed the pale flesh with some off-white. The speckling actually worked pretty well, but next time, I think I'll need to dilute the red a little bit more. Next, the upper part of 2B's chest is laced, and to achieve that, I'll use a super thin down black and just slowly cover that. Then, I'll do the same thing for her thighs. As for her hair, I just went with a simple creamy white color and I'll be using the same color for her bottom and other accessories. Now, I base coated everything that I needed, so it's time to bring out the brush. I was told that I skipped too much of the hand painting parts in my videos, so I'll include more this time. Let me know if you prefer this format, or just comment any feedback you have for me. Since 2B's eyes are covered, this made her portrait easier to paint, but I made sure to dot her mole with my Gundam marker. This Gundam pen will actually come in pretty handy when I start painting the hilt of her sword too. Now, let's tackle something new again and paint in some rust effects onto the robot. I watched some tutorials online and from what I understand, you want to start with a very thin down orange brown color and start creating streaks where you think rust will accumulate. Then you slowly go darker around the top and the center of the streaks and finally I apply a super thin down orange near the areas where rust is the most prominent. And to bring it all together, I'll use the same colors and weather the whole body with a sponge. Then, I'll add some final details to the base, and we can start assembling to be.
Thank you for reaching this far into the video. If you haven't already, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Also, let me know if you enjoyed these longer format videos or if the shorter ones were better. Thank you to all my Patreon and YouTube members and shout out to Scrogger who just joined my Patreon. Now let's finish putting 2B together and see some final glamour shots.